Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe. I hope you're all doing really well this Friday afternoon and soon to be the weekend. So just recently I've been doing a lot of hand tapping and what you all might know about hand tapping is you probably do it with something that resembles a hand tap that looks like this and I've got to say as basic as these are they normally get the job done quite well. But just recently I've been getting really fed up with using this. I find when doing tapping it always comes loose. The handle that you don't adjust always also comes loose. So you're just fiddling around with it and it just doesn't feel that nice to have in your hand when doing any hand tapping. Oh, handles. Oh my god, it's just come to pieces. So my plan today is make a new tap handle from scratch. I've been doing a lot of research recently and I've stumbled across one of this old Tony's videos where he actually makes his own tap handle and looking through the video and looking at the style of the tap handle that's the sort of thing I want to go down because it seems like once it's tightened it's not going to come loose and just seems like a really good design of tap handle so I think thank you this old Tony but I'm going to copy your video and make a tap handle similar to yours but not quite the same so that's what we're going to be doing in today's video making a tap handle on the lathe and on the mill. And if you do enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. To start off with then, we're gonna get this build going by starting with the handles. And to do so, I'm using some 12L14 steel, which is about 12 and a half millimeters in diameter. And for you Imperial folks out there, that's about half an inch. So what I want these handles to have is an M10 thread on the end, which I can thread into the block that's going to hold onto our taps and have the largest diameter shaft I can really get away with just to give it a more chunky feel. So I think we're going to start off by facing this off and just centre drilling it, ready for if I need any tail support and then we'll begin turning this down to accept the M10 thread. <laughs> Just turn that up a little bit. Now we've got our face on there, we can just add a little centre drill. I don't want this to be too massive, but just enough for any later tail support. Really speed that up. And there we go. So I've already traced out my design of the thread and smooth shank section, and in total, I need them to be 35 millimeters. So I'm just going to literally touch the edge of my tool up against the workpiece and happy that that's touched up I'm going to zero that on the X position of my DRO. So I've now got a reference value of how far to go which is 35 millimeters. I'm also just going to touch off on the work now just so I can set the Y position as well. Right with both those set I can now begin taking the depths of cut that I need. So to start with then I'm going to do a 0.3mm depth of cut. And we're just going to run this along 35mm. Right, with that done then, all I've got to do now is repeat that process a couple of times to get this part down just to under 10 millimetres. Right, 
Right then, I've got my part down to final outer diameter now. And I've just added a little chamfer onto the leading edge here, just to make running a die down it a lot more easier. Now, in true This Old Tony inspiration video, I'm going to use a method that I think he, I've seen him use before, of how to get a thread onto a piece of metal. So all you need to do is just grab a nut. Now, it's really important that this nut has six sides. And what you want to do is you want to get that in the palm of your hand. Just about there. Line it up. And woof. And as if by this old Tony, we now have some threads. I don't know the exact science behind this little trick. All I do know is 9 out of 10 times it seems to work. And it seems to work better on smaller threads. Now we've got our threaded part and smooth shank. We can just begin to turn down a little bit of this outer diameter. So I think the next thing I'm going to do now is, I think I'm going to part this off now because we've got most of it roughed out. All that really I need to do is add a knurl on the end of the handle here and add a slight chamfer to the end just to make it feel a little bit better in your hand. This is also going to be a good little test to see how my solid tool post mount gets on. All I've parted off so far on this lathe is aluminium so it'll be interesting to see how it gets on with this 12L14 steel. really not liking that. This type of steel that I'm using actually turns out to be really hard and the lathe really struggled at parting that off so I had to take it over to the bandsaw, cut it there and just clean it up back on the lathe. So we're back now to the end of the handle that needs knurling and this is going to be quite a simple process of just adding some knurls on and cleaning it all up. Once this process is done this is the handle, pretty much all finished. Plenty of cutting oil here as well. Just going to tighten this up for the pass back now. So with that all done, I'm going to clean this up, head over to the bench and we'll look at the part that we've just made, I think. So we've got one of our handles all made now and I'm really happy of how this has turned out. The nails have formed really well and overall this is exactly the sort of feel I wanted from a tap handle. So all that I've got to do now is make another one of these. Or do we? Do, do, do. As with all great YouTube machinists, there's a little tip that we don't tell you and that's because you only ever see us normally make one part and the trick here is get, a, get an iPhone, this is an iPhone 11, set it over the part and take a photo and keep taking photos and eventually the part will multiply. And just like that You've got two identical parts. We've now got our two tap handles to go towards our tap handle assembly. All we need to do now is make the block. So to do that we're going to head over to the mill where we need to machine down some blocks and drill a couple of holes to make this complete. 
To begin with then, we've got some 20mm square bar up in the vise. This square bar has already been split into two identical pieces and I just want to deck this to make it a better profile for the jaws of our tap handle. So I think I'm going to take down about 4mm making this 20 by 16 square bar. So I'm just going to quickly take this out of the vise and deburr it and then when we come back next we're going to find the centre and once we've found the centre we're going to be putting our V-groove in that's going to actually hold the tap. So I think I've come up with a method to cut the V-groove in our blocks. Hopefully this is going to work. So I've found my centre line here and I've also aligned it up to this back jaw face here so it's going to make this process repeatable when we come to do the other side. So using a little 4mm end mill, I'm going to carve a slot in here and then once I'm happy I'm at a good depth, I'm going to come back in with a chamfer tool and add our chamfer which is going to hold on to our tap. So let's give this a whirl. So this is the last pass now and then we can test a bit of tap in there and see how it fits. So happy that my tap now sits firmly into these V grooves, I can begin to drill and tap the holes that I need into the tap handle vise. So again I've lined up these blocks with the back of my vise here so I can use that as a reference point and now all I have to do is switch the blocks out to drill the holes. So I'm going to drill them all out now to the sizes that they need and then finish off by tapping the holes that are required to be tapped. So I've drilled my 10mm clearance holes now and I'm just drilling my final 8.5mm holes that I'm going to tap out to an M10 thread. There we go. So I've just got one more of these holes left to drill out and then we can tap it out and see it all fit together. So I think when I see you next it's going to be over on the bench for a grand revealing of our new tap handle. So, the tap handle 
is all complete. And I'm really happy actually of how this functions. So I've made a few little alterations to the actual main block itself since you last saw it. Um, I've basically shallowed it down just to make it a slightly lower profile. And I've chamfered the edges on a bench grinder and just heat treated it and dunked in some used engine oil to give it sort of this black finish that you see here. Hopefully that's going to stop it rusting. So I had a lot of fun making this tap handle and because of that I think it might be a series that I do on the channel is making tools in the workshop. So I've got the tap handle and I've already made a tap follower. So I think moving forward every now and again you might see videos of me on the channel just making tools that I can use in and around the workshop. Let me know in the comments below what you think to that guys and give me some suggestions of some tools I can make. Other than that, that about sums up this video today. Thank you for watching, drop it a thumbs up and I'll see you next week.